on the right. So we're going to do some examples of these tricky equations today. We'll do the quiz at the end here. Got four problems of like we talked about with solving tricky equations. This will be some good review anyway as we go through. Because all we're really going to do in this particular section is add one extra little piece where we're going to use some identities to help us rewrite the equation in a form where we can actually solve it. So let's look at this first one. Yeah. Look at this first one where we've got two sine squared theta plus cosine squared, or excuse me, plus cosine theta equals one. Now we had a problem that kind of looked like this last time. But remember we went at cosine squared and a cosine, and then we moved everything over and factored it. Okay. That is exactly the right idea what you want to do here. Except that I don't have everything in terms of the same trig function, right? So that's basically what we're going to do with these identities is to try to make sure that we have same the same trig function everywhere, so that we can do that factoring idea like we did before. Or if the arguments are different, so maybe if this were like a now this isn't a good example, but like if this were a two theta rather than a theta, then I have an identity that I can replace sine of two theta with. Okay. That's the idea. We want to try to make the functions match if we can, and also make the arguments match. So what can I do with sine squared theta in order to make the functions match? What can you replace sine squared theta with? Yeah, I can model, yeah we replace that with 1 minus cosine squared theta. And now this looks a heck of a lot like the equations we were doing last time, doesn't it? All right? We tried to factor it if we can. Yeah. So distribute the two through here. So we get two minus two cosine squared theta plus cosine theta equals one. Just so that I can get a positive coefficient on my cosine squared, I'm going to move everything to the right rather than move everything to the left. So when we do that, we should get two cosine squared theta plus cosine, or excuse me, minus cosine theta minus, uh, that is minus one, so we're subtracting the two. Good, because it wasn't going to factor otherwise. <laughs> Nervous there for a second. So we get two cosine squared theta minus cosine theta minus one. And now this, like I said, this now looks a lot like what we did last time, right? How does this factor? Good. And now set each piece equal to zero, right? When we do that, the first one should give us cosine theta equals negative one half. And the second one should give us that cosine theta equals one. I know I skipped a step. <laughs> So remember when we solve these now, we want to find our solutions typically in 0 to 2 pi, but definitely in a period of the function, and then add multiples of 2 pi. So since I have cosine equals a negative number, we're looking in quadrants 2 and 3. Two and three. If I use just a 1 half, what angle do you know has a cosine equal to a half? Pi over three, so we need the pi over three angle in quadrant two and the pi over three angle in quadrant three. What are those? Two 
Good idea. Two pi over three. Four pi over three. And then the last one, when is cosine equal to one? Zero. Zero. So that'll just be our multiples of pi then for that one. Or multiples of two pi for that one then. So again, notice there's not a lot different <laughs> than we did in this problem. There's different than we did in the previous section. All we did was just make sure that we wrote everything in terms of the same trig function to start. So, using that same principle, let's look at the second example. What do you want to do first? Uh, change the secant squared uh, theta x. Uh, each time is the same. Good. So secant squared is. Change uh, the squared plus one. Good. You know, just rearrange. So secant squared is the same thing as tangent squared plus one. So you have tangent squared x plus one and then plus that extra tangent x on the end. I just rewrote it so that our powers are descending. Now the previous problem was nice because we were able to factor it. Unfortunately, this one doesn't factor. Matter of fact, it's going to be even worse than that. That's okay. If something doesn't factor, but it's a quadratic, what can we always use? No matter what. You know, use a quadratic formula, right? So let's remember what your quadratic formula is off to the side here. What is quadratic formula? X equals negative B plus minus square root. B squared minus square root. Over two, good. Sound familiar? <laughs> All right, so instead of X, though, let's find a role of the variable over here that we're trying to solve for. Notice up here, right, we factor with a cosine playing a role of the variable. Here, the role, what's playing a role of the variable is tangent, right? So we use quadratic formula. We're not just saying x is equal to, we would be saying that tangent of x is equal to, right? What's the, co what's the b coefficient in this case? It would be 1, right? It's the coefficient on the tangent, so you'd have negative 1 plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Well, your a and your c are also 1, right? Because the a is the coefficient on the squared, the c is the coefficient on the end. All over 2 times 1. What's wrong with this one? It can be a negative one. Yeah, the negative on the square root's a problem, isn't it? We're looking for real solutions to these problems. This is going to be negative 1 plus or minus square root of negative 3 all over 2, which causes a problem. So what would we say in this case? No solution. Good. So we would have any solution in this particular problem. So perhaps not the best example. That's okay. They give me a chance to remind you about quadratic formula, though. Sometimes you have to use quadratic formula in these. If it did work, 
you would need to do the positive and the negative, do your inverse tangent on your calculator. Because we wouldn't have had one that we do for an exact value for that one. I probably wouldn't have had one. All right. Let's look at the next one. Maybe this one will be a little bit better. This one has cosecant t minus 4 sine t is equal to 0. Again, we have mismatched trig functions, so it would be nice if we could use an identity to write everything in terms of the same trig function. What identity might help here? One over sine. Yeah, one over sine. Okay. So yeah, replace the cosecant with one over sine. Now we've got everything in terms of the same trig function. This should remind you of solving rational equations. Remember the rational equations had, you know, polynomial over polynomial involved rational functions. What was your usually your first step when solving rational equations? What did you typically do first? <clears throat> yeah, multiply by the denominator, right? Get rid of the fractions, correct? Now, anytime you do that, you have to be careful because the denominators here involve variables, right? So it's entirely possible when you do that, you might be multiplying by zero. It's entirely possible you can be multiplying by zero when you do that, correct? So anytime that you have to do the clearing of your fractions to try to solve the equation, you need to check if you get those what we refer to as extraneous solutions. Do you get answers at the end that would have made your original equation undefined? Okay? So you have to make sure you check at the end, right? So for example, if we get any multiple of pi as an answer, we would throw it out in this case, because that would make the sign equal to zero. Okay? So it's just an extra step that you have to do whenever you do that, all right? So let's multiply both sides by sine. We would get one minus four sine squared t equals zero. We've done ones like this before, right? Isolate your sine squared now. Subtract 1 and divide by negative 4 will isolate your sine squared, right? So you'll get sine squared equals 1 fourth. What do we do next? Square root it. You're good. When you take the square root of both sides, we get... So we get one half. We also always get when we take square root, we always get plus or minus. So it'll be plus or minus a half. Notice in this case it's positive or negative, so we're looking at all four quadrants. So in quadrant one, sine is equal to a half layer. Pi over 6. And then in quadrant 2, we would use. And in quadrant 3, we would use. 7 pi over 6. In quadrant 4, we would use. Good. So it's plus or minus, we end up in all four quadrants there. And I know I wrote it as 2n pi as opposed to 2 pi n. I've been trying to use the 2 pi n because I believe that's what your book does. It puts the pi first and then the n. Of course, when I learned it way back, you know, 7,000 years ago, you didn't put the n before the pi and put it after. Yeah, it wasn't quite 7,000 years ago, but <coughs> 1988, 89 was a long time ago. So 
Okay. Uh, again, what the last thing you should do, though, of course, is make sure that none of those made the original undefined. Which it doesn't, right? The only way it's going to make this undefined is if you got multiple files. You have to be a little bit careful there, but not too bad. Any questions on that one? Well, let's do this last one here, and then I'll set you loose on your quiz. Does that sound like a plan? All right. What do you think we should do first? Say it again. Okay, we can certainly do that. Oops. Let me just drag the five, and then I promptly didn't do it. <laughs> One of our three tangents for the three cotangent, we we split into the tangent. Okay, so do I put do I move the three with it though? No. No, okay, because you notice know, it's three out in front of the cotangent. So same idea, we want to make sure that we're writing everything in terms of the same trig function, right? So probably better to rewrite cotangent in terms of tangent. So you would have three over tangent. And then what's next? Yeah, multiply both sides by tangent. So it clears the tangent in the first term, makes the second term two tangent squared theta, and makes the third term minus five tangent theta. And it's probably a little bit easier to see how this factors. If I rearrange it, Good. Two tangent theta minus three and tangent theta minus one. Like I said, rewriting it probably helped a little bit to figure out how that factored. Again, if you don't see how it factors, you can always use quadratic formula. Always. However, more likely than not, on a quiz or an exam, I'm going to have you some, give you some of the factors. I don't need you to try to go through the quadratic formula, too. But you should remember that quadratic formula is a thing. Kind of an important thing. All right. So setting HP is equal to zero and then isolating the tangents. Get tangent theta equals three halves or tangent theta is equal to one. Since we're dealing with tangent, we only need to worry about finding the angles from zero to pi, right? Because the period of tangent is pi, right? Let's look at the second one first because it's a little bit easier. When is tangent equal to one? When are sine and cosine equal to each other? Pi over four. So that one we could actually figure out the exact values for, right? However, we probably don't know when tangent is equal to three halves. So this is when you would need your calculator. Do your inverse tangent of both sides. What do you get when you do inverse tangent of three halves? Okay. It's 
says or. It's an ugly looking or, but it said or. And again, we don't need to go hunting like we do with sine and cosine. Because again, for tangent, we only need to worry about all of the solutions in 0 to pi because that's the period for tangent, right? Once we find the solutions in 0 to pi, we can just add multiple to pi. It doesn't hurt to find all the solutions in 0 to 2 pi, you just don't have to do that for tangent. Questions on that at all? All right, we'll do more of these on Friday.